All right, welcome to episode nine of uh, Mind Chat. My name's Colin Gallagher, and with me around here is uh, Rob Newbury. How you doing, Rob? Hello. And Good. we are in a world today, and um, Danelle is going to tell us all about it. Danelle, over to you. Hi, I'm Danelle, and I'm the teacher of the class of Minecraft at um, our school, which is Riverside High School in Launceston, Tasmania. But my role in the class is actually more about facilitation and supporting learning. The students who are with us today, which is Falcon Cadet and Natbot and Harry Mess, um, they are part of the leadership team of students who um, run our server and control it and work out how we're going to undertake learning on our server. So we have two, two classes running at the moment. We have a Grade 9 10 class with about 27 students in it. We have a Grade 8 class with about 20 students in it. And then we have um, 20 primary school students from our primary school next door, which are about to come onto our server and join in. Then halfway through the year, we change classes and we get a new Grade 9 10 class and a new Grade 8 class. We keep all the students on for the whole year once they've been placed on the server because we like to let them continue to play and explore and, and build and craft and mine. So essentially the gentleman who are with us today is not the um, students are the ones that will be able to give you most of the information about our server and what we do and they'll answer lots of questions for you and sort of just talk along the way as we go. So I'll hand over to them because they're the ones who have the best knowledge of what's really going on in our classroom. All right. Will one of you want to step up to the plate and start our tour off? Anybody? <laughs> Nathaniel, um, come on. Oh, why am I? Okay, I'll be I'll be pointed. Okay, so this is our spawn building. This is where all our students start off, and we tried to make it as nice looking as possible so everyone felt woke, welcome, big open windows and whatnot, nice and bright. The lava in the floor was an interesting touch, but we thought it was cool and decorative. And we have signs to go off to all our different worlds here, so everyone can find their way around. Cool, so lead the way. Let's, let's go somewhere and see what people are doing. Okay, uh, well, this is... People have done some creative building out here in our main spawn world. There is a separate creative world, but uh, people have already started out here. So hopefully everyone's in um, creative so we can fly around and... Mm -hmm see some of the just random buildings that people started. Uh, we have this uh, floating island by one of our students, which is pretty cool. This is one of my favorites, personally. It's pretty cool, yeah. So I'll, um, how I'll just jump in here. What we do with the students is we don't actually tell them what they have to build or mine or anything like that. We actually ask them to work out what they'd like to create. So they have to come up with a project that they want to undertake. The key to their project has to be um, collaborative in nature. So they can work by themselves, yet they have to point out in their project um, pro forma what they're actually going to do and how they're going to involve other people in the collaboration and building of their project. So um, we do that by the use of the Google form and the students build that out and um, offer all the information that we request, which is essentially along the lines of their project name who's involved in their team if they're working in a team, who they might collaborate with along the way, um, who has skills in the class that they will seek out, and that's part of the collaboration. And then further to that, they will talk about some of the things they plan to learn or they think they will learn through doing the project that they choose. So it's very open and we've done that deliberately um, because that's the feedback we've got from the students that they actually want to make some choices themselves. Okay, and um, this is a, a <clears throat> it takes the form of an after school club, or how does it look during the school week? Okay, in the school week, what happens is we actually have um, a double lesson on a Tuesday afternoon for grade nines and tens, so that's 100 minutes, and then a Friday morning is another 50 minutes in class time. So it's actually part of our school program, yeah. not the school program. The grade eights have um, 100 minutes on a Wednesday. And then after school, um, students coming onto the server whenever they wish. Um, our server is actually 24-7 server, so they can come on at any stage through the, the day, night, and through the week, um, through holidays and things like that. We monitor the server. So that's um, Chris and Nathaniel. Um, Chris does a fair amount of the monitoring because he's quite active at um, doing lots of other things on his computer with um other forums and groups and games that he's playing. So he does a lot of the monitoring of what's going on and feeds that back to us when we need to know if there's an issue that arises. So essentially we have class time 
So our class is actually called Minecraft, and mm -hmm. then the students can just come on whenever they, whenever they feel that they would like to come on and play. Okay. So Chris is here, right? Yeah, I'm here. I'm usually just quiet. <laughs> so how do you, um, what's, what do you end up doing on a regular basis in this world? Are there, is there any issues or what, how do you manage um, students going a bit crazy sometimes? Uh, mostly last year was um, when people usually went crazy, but this year it's been a bit better because um, it's just, we just monitor it really now because mm -hmm. we've got, done it for a year and we've learned from that and we've adapted to that. Yeah. What sort of plugins do you run to kind of keep track of stuff? Um, we have Logblock if um, anything goes mm -hmm. crazy, and WorldGuard is the only other one mm -hmm. that we use to, to stop that. We have um, MCMO so people can rank up, and we also have Mob Bounty so people can, get, can gain money and stuff like that. Oh, mm -hmm. great. So just going back a little bit, um, Nathaniel, do you want to talk about the charter, which is what we've set in place to help students understand some stuff? Okay. Um, so basically when we first started this project, which would have been oh, a, almost a year and a half probably <coughs> ago, um, we created a charter, so, um, basically a set of rules for the students to follow so we, they know what our expectations of their behaviour and world and how we wanted them sort of to work in groups and be fair to each other. Or, and then we've had people comment and we've tweaked it depending on what we've done with PVP and different survival concepts. So that's grown with the students and with the group as our community has changed and grown. Very good. And that's, you, know, you feel that's an important part of um, Minecraft in your school? Uh, yeah. Um, as much as we try to keep our Minecraft subject free and open, that's sort of like the underlying guidelines yeah. of our course. So what grades are you guys in? What um, year level? <clears throat> um, we're all grade 10, grade so 10. 16 years okay. of age. So or, go well, ahead. coming up six. Yeah. <laughs> Rob, you've got a kind of a similar setup in your school with um, getting students to... Um, kind of manage your server right yeah a little bit we've we've got a couple of servers and one of them um, we've given to a student as part of his uh, his cast project for his uh, he's a year 12 student so uh, he volunteers his time to manage the server and make sure that uh, kids are in and that the whitelist is maintained and that kind of stuff so yeah fairly similar thing what was the uh, what was the conversation like with your admin when you brought this up to the to the school that you wanted to do this <laughs> One of you guys want to uh, that? Yep. Um, I suppose I'll jump in again. Uh, well, first, when we were uh, designing the subject, we talked to our principal. So we wanted to get her backing for it when we first started. And then we had Miss Batty having lots of email conversations with um, the government techies down in Hobart and the um, techies at our school to try and get things working. Um, we eventually decided that we want to have an external server run by... Um, our own server admin, who we had, um, who when setting up the server, we had um, contact to sort of gain some experience. Who, uh, that's Joe K, who runs Massively Minecraft. Yep. So that's where Massively Minecraft comes in our IP name. Mm. So, what's your relationship with Massively Minecraft? How's, how does that work? I've heard about them before, but I haven't had the chance to have Joe on any of the episodes yet. So, what, what's their kind of vision? <laughs> Uh, well, basically, Joe just runs the server and has um, lots of groups of kids of, um, I think it's about 8 to uh, eight, six, 16, sorry. Um, and basically, it's just a collaborative environment to sort of encourage uh, kids to use Minecraft creatively and learn a bit. Um, and that basically started out, Miss Buddy suggested for me and um, for Chris to go on there and uh, learn a bit about how they run their Minecraft server and eventually that relationship grew to where Joe helped us run our server. So essentially Joe jo, um, supports us but her support is from the perspective that she asks questions of the, of the boys when they're updating the server you know and there's a new update come out and also when they want to tweak things she throws questions at them to get them to think about what might be the impact of putting a new plugin in what other pl you know, plugins will be affected and how will that change the way things happen on the server for us. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. So she's there as our support person, and which is really great. She spends quite a bit of time chatting with us 
um, over Skype and um, we learn lots from her. And essentially from our time on her server, we've learned a lot as well because we wanted to allow the students to have ownership rather than it be me telling them what to do all the time. And so oh, yeah. I've learned a lot from Jo as well through doing that. So she's been a massive support for me in relation to the pedagogy that I use in and on the server with the students. Mm -hmm. What about parents? How about, uh, did you have conversations with parents before you took this on? Did you have full parent buy-in or was there any parents that were concerned about it? Guys, do you want to talk about that? I have no idea anything about the parents. I didn't deal with that. Yeah. What do your parents think about it, Matt um, and Chris? My my dad was like a server admin, so he understands how I do everything. But other than that, they they don't really know. Yeah. Haven't really haven't really been talking about it with them much. Yep. Nat, what about you? My parents, especially my dad, took a little more convincing to the educational uses of Minecraft and how that could be beneficial. So that's been a bit of a learning journey for me and then teaching him and helping to let him understand as well has been quite interesting. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So essentially what we've done is um, we spent half a year roughly researching and um, working out what the educational benefit might be for our school and for our students. And that was part of what we put to, to our um, principal and AP when we um, put forward the subject. In regard to um, parent body, what we've tried to do is educate them a little bit through our pendulum, so providing some links um, to the things that we've done. And essentially, you know, lots of the students are playing Minecraft, so they've got an idea that they're playing that at home. This year we've expanded a little bit and Nathaniel um, last year did a course um, on gamification with Coursera and he's used some of the um, information he got from that, some of his learning and implemented our ranking system. And I think this year it'll allow us through doing that to allow parents to have a better understanding of what students are learning we do have a parent information evening where they come along and ask questions, but most people end up going to math, science, English, and history, and um, so, so which is society and environment. Um, so yeah, it's it's a diff, it's a, it's a new thing that's sort of grown a little bit. People are coming along and asking a few questions. We focus more on building identity and collaboration and creativity, and mm -hmm. as it's an optional subject, you know that's why we can do that rather than focusing on say you know english or maths or geography and things like that and history yeah yeah for the guys that are running the server what do you think your biggest learning's been what, what have you learned i guess that's a good question i guess teachers are always asking what have you learned but yeah what have you learned well for me it's been um the difficulty of um coming at everything from a, an educational standpoint instead of a regular standpoint because i used to run just different random servers and I took no care in what I really did but when mm -hmm. you're coming into a school environment you have to really think about what you're going to do and if it's going to affect it um, in a negative way. Sure, that's a great point. Mm. Anybody else? And, and for me, uh, um, I do also do at school a um, program called Think Big which is a personalised learning program that replaces regular English and health and SOS and history. So that's basically all my learning has been based around Minecraft and what we do. So I've been looking at how people work together on the Minecraft server and the relationships, how we integrate PVP and how that affects people with actually hurting other um, each other. So all about how people interact has been my biggest learning, I suppose. Mm. What's been your biggest challenge so far? Hmm. Um, definitely finding a way that our charter can be even and fair to everyone while still, still leaving open opportunities to everyone. Um, we really wanted it to be as open as possible, and especially as we were considering PvP, we had to make quite a few changes to our, or a couple of changes to our charter, so that that left us open to be able to do that while still making sure that no one was hurt or upset or there was any arguments or not. Yeah, I would imagine PvP. I've never had it in our school. Is a kind of a, it's it's a bit of a touchy subject. I think maybe. Um, because it's obviously fighting against one another. How do you kind of approach that? 
Um, basically, my approach has been try and shift the focus away from the violence itself. So mm -hmm. do something like um, capture the flag, where the focus isn't on the violence itself. There's a team objective where you're working together in a more sportsman-like fashion. So the idea isn't actually to kill someone. There's actually an objective. So right. the focus has shifted away from violence and more to something more productive. Yeah, that's a good, it's a good angle to come from. So we've teleported we've, to another we area here. Sorry, go ahead, Rob. Yeah, well, no, no, it's okay. I was just gonna say, um, we've uh, it looks like a new area, yeah. But yeah. we 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 did a Hunger Games uh, mod at our school a couple times, and that uh, was a lot of fun. It was only vol it was voluntary. If anybody wanted to do it, they could do it, but they didn't have to do it, and it was it was a lot of fun for people who did it. Do you set up just like areas for PvP in this in this world? Um, in the old world, last year we did have an area for PvP. We haven't done any PvP areas yet this year. That was actually a student project, the PvP arena. We had a Coliseum um, last year, which was a student project. We don't usually set up PvP arenas ourselves. Usually we let the students nut that out for themselves. Mm -hmm. But I imagine there will be something similar this year once we figure out how that's going to go together with our server and our charter. So, have you any um, plans in the in the working on how this is going to go in the future, or are you just kind of letting it run organically? Um, well, we are having to consider since we're in grade ten, we'll be leaving the school soon, so we're not going to be able to have such an active role in the classroom. So, we're having to sort of think about people in the class who can maybe carry on our role in the future, right? So that we can con so that the course can continue. So we're sort of having to think about that, which is a very interesting yeah. thing to consider. Yeah, it'd be hard to let it go. You could still drop in from time to time, I'm sure. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, Did also, just so you know, this area, this is our creative world. Okay. So people just creative building and just trying things out in this world for the most part. One thing about the server is um, everyone's really spread out, so it's hard to mm. find all of the buildings. Because um, there's a couple of people who like um, recreating Pokemon, and then mm. they make big humongous structures, so they need to go out far, far, far enough to get enough space. Right. Uh, would you like me to find the main pixel art gallery for, gallery for Pokemon? There's one that um, has been done with by one of our um, students, Cream of Justice, which is quite epic. Yeah, which absolutely. I can find if you'd like to. Yeah, yeah, let's see it. Okay. Yeah. Uh, just a moment. Donnell, so, what have your been challenges been? Sorry, sorry for cutting across. Sorry, my major challenge. Um, my major challenge has been letting go and um, not having the control I'm used to having in the classroom. Mm -hmm. So becoming more of a meddler rather than you know the person who's in control and saying this is what we're doing today and this is you know what we're going to learn specifically it's more about me learning with the students and, and that's been a very big challenge for me also um the fact that not knowing everything and so you know right. walking into the classroom and knowing that the students that are here today are actually my support as much as they are the support of the other students and i, I think that's been a very empowering thing for the students mm -hmm. but also exceptionally challenging for me i was extremely challenged by the concept of pvp mm -hmm. Um, I personally, you know, my personal perspective is I really don't like it yeah. um, simply because of the behaviours that it can create in the physical classroom and to work up to that we had a lot of discussion with the lead students which is about 14 boys who, um, you know, at different times discussed the concept of PVP out before we opened up a PVP arena and um, in doing that one of the young men in our class got there and was very open and honest about the fact that you know, if he if he felt that he was being attacked and lost all his stuff, he would actually jump up out of his seat and go over to the person who did that. So, you know, we, which has been really good because the students have been so honest in their reactions and responses that they would have. So for me, that's been extremely challenging as to, okay, how do we enable this learning to occur but also keep it, you know, metered enough so it is controlled and not going to cause any, you know, major danger or havoc for them. So it's been challenging from that perspective and to also make sure that it does fit within that educational realm rather than just, you know, jumping in and just, you know, playing around and not thinking about what we're actually learning from what we're doing. So 
it's not like I, IT is not my first, um, I suppose, teaching area. I'm actually a home ec teacher. So the creative side I really love. Um, but it's certainly been a challenge for me, the whole concept, as in just going in and starting it. So it's been more about listening to the students rather than me driving it. Mm. I listen and work with them and facilitate with them. Right. Wow, we're in the Pokemon gallery, I see. Yeah, we sure are. Fantastic. So it, it, it is a class, but it's not, it's, a, it's not graded or reported it on, on, is it in a, in a report card by, in any way, That's is it? Yeah, it is. It absolutely. Is? Oh. Can you tell yeah. us a bit, bit about that? It fits under, um, we have, in the Tasmanian curriculum, we have an ICT checklist. We also have um, a technology um, curriculum area, and so I use those and meld them together to give a, a, an award. So, yeah, it is reported on. I focus mainly on, um, you know, collaboration, creativity, problem solving, right. communication digital, you know, their identity online. So we're focusing even more this year on building that online identity. So that's part of re the reason why the, having the boundaryless concept of the 24 seven server is so important because it's about letting that natural identity occur and build. And our blog is about developing that as well. So students become, you know, um, they create their identity there and build on it. So yeah, it's, under the technology banner, it fits quite nicely, and you know we, we choose aspects of it and um, focus on those. Do the kids uh, add to the blog as well, or is it just teacher? Um, at the moment, the blog is is run by um, this three of us, I think, who have um, editing rights at the moment. Uh, what will happen over the you know the course of the year is that they'll expand out to students being able to pop in and, and post their own stuff. At the moment, they're giving it to me and we sit together and we edit and then we pop it up. And some of them are starting to get some feedback from people around the world. And so that encourages them to get their own blog started. So it's a natural progression. And from my experience, that's been the, the most um, effective way of doing it, simply because I'm not forcing them. They're choosing to opt in when they're ready. So yeah, so eventually by the end of the year, I would hope that maybe 50 to 60% of the students will be putting their own stuff up without me supporting them in doing that. Yeah. yeah. It's one of the common trends we've had over the last eight episodes is that it really does give a natural kind of environment to learn about citizenship and not only digital mm. citizenship, but actually just uh, you know, you're living with people and res you know being responsible and respectful. So yeah. yeah so sharing that's, space. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I'd have to agree. One of the things that I find, I suppose, most encouraging is seeing the way the students actually start to support each other and um, be fair and kind and generous to one another. And we've had moments where, you know, we've had to deal with some issues like some griefing or, you know, someone has done said something or done something and, it, you know, it hasn't gone down overly well. But what's happened is that they really do develop a good community spirit and learn to understand and accept difference much much more, I suppose, effectively than what they do naturally in the real world. So they're actually, it's they're learning from that and they're then taking it back into the real world and face-to-face -face situations. Mm. Rob, any um, final things? We're kind of coming up to the end here. Time flies, obviously, when you're having fun. Um, no, I'm just wondering if the students have anything they want to add. Yeah, I just want to. Pa I just want to say first, it's probably wrong that I know a lot of these Pokemon names here. <laughs> <laughs> um, before we go, yeah, just maybe the, if the guys could maybe just um, go around and just say one thing about you know, maybe if schools are listening, principals that are listening around the world, um, you know, and they're wondering how they can bring it into their schools, you know, why, why, why would they? Why should they? So maybe if the students can give a little answer to that and we'll, we'll wrap up after that. Nathaniel? Harry, you haven't said much, you can start. Harry. Um, yeah, all right. Um, I think Minecraft is such a creative tool in that it's a purely sandbox game and so that you can do so many things with it that it's one of the most powerful learning tools in modern teaching. Mm. So I feel like you can do so many things with it that a lot of different subjects could incorporate it for different things. Absolutely. Uh, Definitely. Chris, is it? Uh, yep. Um, what I was going to say is that um, if you have people, who, uh, students who like IT and administrating and everything, running a server is a great 
uh, learning tool mm-hmm. for them to be able to get that sort of experience. Absolutely. And Nathaniel? Um, well, I think that especially with digital communities such as Facebook, social networking, it's important to have somewhere where students can learn to be responsible with these sorts of tools and use them effectively. And I think having Minecraft and a community of the Minecraft server is a great way to do that and to start out in a school that way. Cool. Donnell, you must be very proud of these guys. I am, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, there's there's one more thing I'd like to add is that mm-hmm. one of the things that I find with it, apart from what the boys have already mentioned, which I you know totally agree with, is that we often have students who are disengaged or somewhat isolated, and through Minecraft, those those things disappear, and that's that's extremely powerful. Mm-hmm. And to see them reengage with learning is a really wonderful thing. One thing I forgot to ask was, uh, did any of the subject teachers um, have you kind of tried to? bring it into any of the subjects like whatever like um, humanities or something is there any has there been any crossover yet um there, there was last year um a group of boys did um the great wonders of the world i don't know if they did incorporate it with any history subjects or anything right. but i do know that they spent a lot of time rebuilding uh really big structures mm-hmm. cool as far as um, other teachers in our school picking it up, it's a very slow sort of take up there, mm-hmm. and so we drip we drip feeding a little bit at the moment, and hopefully you know some people will become a little bit more excited about it and and see some opportunities. We actually have a wonderful opportunity um, about the thirteenth of April, I think it is. We're going to the Tasmanian um, English um, conference, and we're going to present on Minecraft and how. Um, it supports um, literacy development. So that, I think, will be a fairly powerful moment for um, teachers to realise how, you know, how they can use a tool like this to actually enable students to engage in, in literacy and build on their literacy skills. That's great. Good luck with that, guys. Yeah, yeah. So we'll wrap up. Thank you so much for having us, and um, maybe we can drop in again sometime if, we, if you have any more developments in your world. So thanks yeah, again. Definitely. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thanks. All right, this is the end of this episode. See you next week. Bye-bye.